Go forward for your next truck or SUV and find an easier way to buy with Woodhouse Ford today and experience the convenience of buying with Woodhouse Ford. Save up to $13,000 off MSRP on a 2023 Ford F-150 XLT plus 3.9% APR for 60 months with approved credit, $299 dock fee due at signing. Security deposit wave expires 1-02-2024. stuff in it but the, the elements that were in it were so pure that even in the back of the space we could not manufacture it do you believe in aliens or ufos i do now i definitely do now <laughs> i believe in it now because i've seen it and i know what i've saw I Catch my channel, Mars Discoveries 123, on YouTube. Hit me a like and subscribe. I'll see you there. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Alien Strand Podcast. I'm your host, Donald Ledesma, and welcome to today's show. So, this is going to be a pretty good one today. It's, it's number 48. The Real UFO Talk 2. So we decided to make another one because uh, the first one got a lot of good responses and uh, and it's nice to, to, to talk with other people that have the same interests as we do here on Alien Strand. And these guys, uh, they have a lot of insight on, on these uh, crafts and UFOs and stuff that they witnessed themselves. So we're going to get them on the show here in a bit. But before we get going, I'd just like to welcome everybody to Alien Strand Podcast. You can catch us on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and AlienStrand.com. Go check us out there. And uh, don't forget to download the free app that we have there on Google Play. Pretty simple to use. Just uh, register yourself and uh, you'll be on the be able to to download any of the episodes that come out right so uh, and you can also comment on on all the episodes so I've been having a lot of new uh, followers and listeners and I I appreciate you guys for that thank you so so much for that Uh, 
you know, the word is getting around on Alien Strand, and, you know, uh, we're here just to give you all the information that we can on what we know or, or what we don't know when other guests come on. They give us a lot more insight, and in, and in return, we give you the insight so that way you guys can can uh, can just get educated with ufology just like we're doing here today. So uh, if you want to be a guest on the show, you can just call us at 361-245-8000. Again, that's 361 361- Two four five eight thousand. Check us out there. Give us a call. You want to be a guest on the show? You have some uh, interest in UFOs? You've seen one? You have videos? You've been up close to one? You've been abducted? Anything of the unknown? Just give me a call, or you can send me an email, or just send me some messages through Instant Messenger, okay? And then I'll try to get back with you, you know, as soon as I can. So, uh, and also, if you go to the Facebook app, you'll be able to hit, uh, hit that call now button, and it'll call me directly to my cell phone. So, uh, like I said, if uh, you guys want to be a guest, just give me a call there, and then we'll set something up for you. Um, also, if you guys guys have a chance, go check out Alien Strand there on Facebook. I've been throwing out a lot of good stuff there lately, a lot of nice videos. Um, you know, it's just a lot of cool stuff that's been coming out. You know, it's uh, almost unbelievable, you know, if you kind of think about it. But uh, there's some really good footage. Uh, and, and these things are for you to decide if you think it's real or not. There's been a lot of triangular shaped uh, crafts out there lately, you know, uh, or objects or orbs that that go in, into that uh, triangular shape for some reason, right? Why is it always that triangle? I mean, that's what always gets me. But um, without further ado, you know, I'm going to go ahead and bring these guys in, good friends of mine. And uh, I want you guys to uh, listen to our nice conversation. And that way you guys can get a little bit more educated on, on ufology. Uh, and, you know, it's just something interesting for everyone and very educational for everyone in ufology. So let's go ahead and bring them on in right now. All right. So now on the phone, we have uh, Michael Beavers and we have Rodney Thomas. You guys there? Yep, 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 yep. Good to be here. Good to be here. What's going on? Hey, nice to have you guys on the show, and and thank you for coming on Alien Show. And I really do appreciate you guys uh, doing this uh, for me as well. You know, and uh, we had um, um, actually me and Michael had uh, had one which was we did call Real UFO Talk, which was the first one, and uh, we decided to do another one because you know I want to bring you in, uh, Rodney, because I've I've seen a lot of your videos too. <laughs> And, you know, I want to hear your expertise on on everything that's that's out there of the unknown that we, we just don't really know about. So um, let's go ahead and start with you, Rodney. Uh, so what what's your background? Uh, what do you do in, as, as far as your show and and how do you get going with with what you've been doing? Well, the reason I actually started off in, in UFOs and stuff, it, it actually started back when I was in the military back in. Uh, 2003 uh, and the UFOs caught my curiosity because I was stationed in Fort Bliss, Texas and nice. um, we were all lined up outside of the uh, the mess hall to go back to our barracks this is uh, at this time I was in uh, AIT which is uh, advanced individual training nice. and uh, it was night time and I just uh, happened to look in the sky and see these uh two lights dancing in the sky and I mean they were bright I wasn't the only one that seen it everybody was outside so we all can see it and these things were moving sporadic they were moving in the air dancing back and forth Mm -hmm. and um, you know my drill sergeant happened to be passing me as I was looking up in the sky and um, I had the nerve to ask him and you know I'm like drill sergeant what is that and uh, he just kind of did a half a halfway smile and said eyes forward private and uh and then we all just marched <laughs> back to the uh <laughs> we all just marched back to the barracks wow. now fast forward i've always had this uh fascination with ufos mm-hmm. but um you know before then i since then i haven't really seen anything and um my dad uh, and his girlfriend would come outside. Uh, they would uh, come over and, and watch the little fights with us and whatnot. Right. And uh, they would go outside and they would actually see these things in the sky uh, over by my house. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, I wear glasses. I have horrible vision. <laughs> so mm-hmm. yeah. it would be uh, him, his girlfriend, and my girlfriend. And they would always say they see stuff. And I got so frustrated with it um, that I start looking at night vision um, uh, equipment. Nice. Um, and I find that, found out really quick it was extremely expensive. So yes. I ended up going on eBay. Mm-hmm. And uh, finding some night vision equipment, and uh, and and the moment I went outside, it just opened my eyes to how much stuff is out there, how much stuff that passes over our heads that right. we never know about, whether it be um, man-made, whether it be debris falling from the sky, mm-hmm. or whether it be otherworldly. I mean, there's just so much stuff going on that we have no clue. It's out there, and it's just flying right over our heads. Wow. I mean, yeah, a lot of people have seen a lot of this activity, and, and a, lot, a lot of people have been kind of mistakenly uh, thinking that they're seeing a, a UFO, but there's actually a lot of, there's, I don't know, hundreds of satellites up there, and now with the new SpaceX, and, and they, ju- they just launched those uh, satellites in a row, a lot of people are actually video uh, taping those or, you know, or shooting them on their phones, and they're thinking it's an actual UFO, but I get it, you know, as far as the night vision, a night vision, you get to see things that you don't get to see with the naked eye most of the time, because it's just anything that's given off any kind of light, I mean, it's going to pull through that night vision. So how, how do we get, uh, how did you start the Awaken show? Well, I wanted something uh, because I just felt like I felt like people were just kind of sleeping uh, when it came to UFOs. And at the time I'd actually started it, uh, we were still in the phase where the government was actually denying that UFOs existed. And, you know, just uh, basically, um, you know, making light of, of the subject. And I, I really felt like we were kind of like in a, in a sleep mode uh, as far as the world was, as far as when it came to UFOs. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, man, people really need to start waking up to this, really start need to pay in, paying attention to it. Because, you know, I could see this stuff. And this was right around the time that uh, Moa Moa came around. I don't I don't know if you're familiar with that. but um, Sounds familiar. It was the, uh, the asteroid that came from interstellar space. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, and a lot of people were suspecting that that was a uh, interstellar traveler. That's originally what they called it. Right. And um, there were a lot of different scientists that were looking for radio signals uh, from this different object. And I thought this was the perfect time to really start the channel. So between Oumuamua and between just the government um, really just saying that UFOs didn't exist, Mm-hmm. I was just like, you know what, it's time for people to wake up. And I just came up with the idea of the Awaken Show. Nice, nice. Uh, Michael, so uh, your show is called The Theory. Um, let's go ahead and refresh uh, our audience listeners on what you're about and how you, you got started in ufology. Yeah, for sure. Um, so my show on Facebook and YouTube is The Theory with Mike Beavers. And I, I started, uh, I always believed a little bit as a kid, but as I got older and stuff, it seemed a little more serious. And I, I actually filmed this triangle UFO here in Springfield, Oregon. And when, when I filmed that, it set it off for me that I was like, okay, I got to start chasing this. And somehow along the, along the way, I, I don't remember what post it was or what it was, how I got in touch with Rodney. But somehow we ended up linking up together and uh, created some content. We uh, founded the American UFO Society page together, nice. and uh, we kind of random encounter, and, and we've been we've been cool ever since, and worked on a lot of projects together. Wow, that's good. You yeah, know, just click. Yeah, I mean, that, I was just going to ask you too how, how you guys got to, together, you know, on on putting these the, these things together, you know. But as I've seen your videos too, and I mean, they're really good. Uh, uh, as far as you know, the the production part of it, and how you kind of you guys are analyzing everything, and uh, you know, you do a great great job, and and I really appreciate that. Um, so let's talk a little bit about some UFOs, okay? So um, people have always 
seeing these triangular shapes uh, that are coming out of the sky, right? All the time you see the, the videos, even Michael caught one uh, of a triangular shape. You know, uh, a lot of these images we're seeing of people shooting uh, images uh, of the moon or a video of the moon, and you see this triangular shape go by. You know, um, you see it everywhere, you know, even in the, the, the big one in Arizona you know, or the Phoenix. This was triangular shape, right? So people are starting to kind of confuse that black triangle right that's what they call it black triangle ufo mm -hmm. as a tr3b right what is <laughs> your what is your take on that i mean people don't really know a lot of people don't know the difference you know what i mean but what is y'all's take on that so uh i'll go ahead and start if you want just it. because after seeing one in person and uh kind of being able to know what they look like from firsthand experience what I seen almost didn't have a craft attached to it. It seemed like they might have been three separate lights just moving in a perfect formation, mm -hmm. which kind of makes it even weirder. But it was it was transparent in the middle. You couldn't see it, anything attached to it. So there's no way it was a, a TR-3B or some kind of experimental craft because it to me it didn't even look as if there was a craft. It just looked like three solid lights. So I think there could be a TRCB or a military triangle craft, but I don't think a lot of times that's what people are actually catching on camera. Right, right. What do you think about that, Rodney? Well, I'm going to try not to speculate as much as possible, but from physical data or that I can actually uh, look at here, I know that a lot of scientists have been coming out with a lot of different material. And mm -hmm. one uh, piece of material that I know they have for a fact, and they're using it in military purposes, is actually called Fanta Black. Mm -hmm. um, and Fanta Black is actually these tubes that are so small, light, when you shine light on it, it doesn't reflect off of it at all. Now, I don't know if you know, but anything that you shine light on, it has some reflection. Right. There's a 99% absorption rate on this Fanta black that they have mm -hmm. and um, they're using it on on military uh, projects now if you were to put this in front of your face it would literally look like a black hole was in was over your face Wow! if that makes sense like if you're so I, I think that there's a possibility that these crafts that we're looking at, they could potentially be man-made mm -hmm. um, or reverse engineered, so to speak, and they're right. using this type of material on it. So when you're literally looking at the object, it looks like two or three lights on it making a, a triangle. Right. And then you're looking at nothingness because the Santa Black is there's nothing to reflect off of. Right. So that's one theory that I have as far as you know, when people are seeing these lights in the sky, um, because when I looked, I, I've actually caught one myself. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you remember, Mike, but we were doing a review. Uh, we were up all night looking at the UFO footage, and uh, we happened to catch a triangle that flew across. Um, on the mono cam, on the mono camera. Right? On the, yeah, on the mono camera. I and do it was, remember that. <laughs> yeah, and it was interesting because we could clearly see a satellite uh, mm -hmm. that, that went off from like an angle. And then it was almost like this triangle form followed the satellite <laughs> wow. and then kind of went its own way after it. Um, but again, you only saw, I, I don't, I can't even really say you saw lights. It was more of a straight line. It was more like a, Dark a line. Uh -huh. Yeah. Like a, like a Shadow. line per se. Uh -huh. um, but that, that could just, that can just be, you know, the material that they're using, you know, we don't know. Right. Well, I think, uh, I mean, I was kind of reading up on it a little bit and the T, uh, they first came up with the, the idea of the TR, it was called a TR3A, right? And then uh, after mm -hmm. a while they did, they did a successor, which was a TR3B. And this came from the information uh, in 1999, I believe, by this guy named Edgar uh, Fouché, something like that, I believe. And they said he worked at Area 51. So this is where they got the idea of TR, uh, TR-3B, TR-3A, uh, because it was a, he said it was a tactical uh, reconnaissance aircraft that supposedly they were putting together, right? Uh, or trying to um, trying to build, I guess. And uh, I mean, it, it, it 
now these days with what we're seeing with the with the stealth bomber, uh, you know, it it kind of it kind of makes sense how it's the name and how the stealth was kind of made in a way. Uh, but when people mention the the TR three B and the TR three A, you know, of course they get it confused with the with the triangular shapes of these uh, uh, UFOs, uh, and uh, and I, I just think it's a little com- it's confusing at times for people. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to get that out in the open so that way people know that you know it's it's those are two different definitions of two different crafts. So you know, or, or two different things uh, that that that's actually up there, and people are catching this. You know, on their, yeah. um, on their, like you guys did, right? So you, you're they're catching it on a video. They're catching it on their night vision. I mean, it's it, even during the day. You know, so it's that's what's kind of um, lately. I don't know if you've been, uh, if you've been to Alien Strand there on Facebook, but I've been throwing out a lot of this uh, video, uh, video footage of these kind of crafts, and there's just a whole bunch of it. But then there's a lot of CGI too, right? So, um, you oh know, yeah, for sure. Th- that's why I wanted to touch up on this. And uh, y- you know, he said that uh, that this actual craft had a it was called an MFD, which is a magnetic field disruptor, supposedly that was on this on this craft. So, uh, you know, and I just wanted to throw it out there to you guys. Uh, so, as, as far as this triangular shape, now did you guys see the video on uh, the one they caught in Las Vegas there on the hotel uh, in the hotel area? There was like three or four different cam footages of people. Was it the transparent one where it was like literally it almost looked like it just had almost like a pearlescent transparent look to it? Yeah, and then it kind of just broke up into like four different pieces or whatever. Like it was just it was triangular and then it just it just kind of went into five different shapes. I mean, not shapes, but uh, orbs, I guess, that came out of it. And then it just shot straight up. Uh, Did you guys see that video? I I remember seeing that one. I remember seeing something similar. I'm not sure if it's the same one because I don't remember it actually breaking apart. Mm-hmm. But I do remember seeing a, a video from Las Vegas that that was definitely like a, almost like a transparent triangle. It almost looked like it, it could have been a shape. It could have been a cloud, but it, it wasn't. It was it was in a perfect triangle and it had a certain shine to it that was very strange. But uh, it was over Las Vegas, so I actually lived in Las Vegas for a little bit. And while I didn't see any UFOs. I did one time think I was seeing UFOs, but it turned out to be helicopters coming back from the Grand Canyon tours. They mm-hmm. all come in a in a straight line, mm-hmm. and all you see is these big white lights coming across the sky in a perfect line. But you end up hearing them and realizing it's helicopters. Wow! So have you now? That's not the one that's coming over the mountains that you're talking about, is it? No, it's right over the hotel that the guy's standing out there with his video camera. And he goes, "Look, here's the ground. Here's the sky." What the hell is this? I did see that one. Yes. Yeah, yes. That one. I did see that. Okay. Yes. He's, he's kind of pointing at the ground, the swimming pool, then he points straight up and then it, it kind of dissipates. It kind of like goes into five different directions and it goes straight up in the air. Uh, and there's there's like four different uh, uh, cameras that recorded that. I'm not talking about the cameras mm-hmm. from the hotel. These are the cameras that people are holding in their hands. You know what I mean? Yeah, saying? from other people. Yes. Yes. So it, it's out there. And, and, and when I saw that video, I was like, oh, my God, you know, somebody actually saw this pretty close, you know, where it was at. I mean, it, it was I mean, you could see it clear as day. I mean, you can't touch it, but I mean, it was close enough to where the video was so clear on this uh, on this triangular shape. Now, have you any of you guys ever met anybody or talked to anybody about uh, the Phoenix Light uh, Phoenix Lights incident? Yeah. Wake up at Holiday Inn Express to a can't-miss breakfast that's free with every stay. Count on all the hot, fresh coffee you need and an incredible breakfast buffet that has something for everyone, like eggs, cinnamon rolls, and even hot, fresh pancakes with all the toppings you crave. Next time, do yourself a favor and stay at a Holiday Inn Express with a can't-miss breakfast that's free with every stay. So, when you wake up at Holiday Inn Express, you'll wake up happy, a part of IHG Hotels and Resorts. All aboard for your chance to win $1,000 every week until December 28th. That's right, $1,000 cash just in time for the holidays. To hop on board, just head to churchillmortgage.com and punch your ticket to the Churchill Express giveaway. Visit churchillmortgage.com for your chance to win big. This is a paid advertisement. NMLS ID 1591. NMLSconsumeraccess.org. Equal housing lender. 1749 Mallory Lane, Suite 100, Brentwood, Tennessee 37027. 
Sometimes during Christmas, something magical happens. Hey, Cricket customers. The Max with Ads plan is included with the Cricket $60 Unlimited plan at no additional cost. And this holiday season, Max is the one to watch when you're feeling festive. Son of a nutcracker. Cozy up to all the holiday classics like Elf, 8-Bit Christmas, and the Harry Potter 8 film collection. Just log in with your Cricket username and password to experience Max on all your favorite devices. Phone plan streams and standard definition programming subject to change. Fees, terms, and restrictions apply. See CricketWireless.com for details. Um, it, it's it, we're kind of laughing about that because um, I know uh, I I just recently helped out uh, with an interview um, in, in reference to the Phoenix Lights, and I think Mike, you can speak on that a little bit more because you were actually doing the interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rodney, Rodney, hooking up with some some awesome streaming software through his computer and got me an interview with Jeff Woolwine and uh, okay. he's like a, a like an expert basically on on Phoenix UFO activity petroglyphs and mountains and things like that right, and right. we did about an hour and a half interview uh, talking about nothing but like Phoenix activity uh, the basic portals almost carved into mountain sides by native people and and just lots of stuff like that and he's filmed quite a bit of orange orbs and things like that in the sky and my sighting here with the triangle almost fits the description of like the phoenix orange orbs rather than like a like a triangle craft or something like that because they they didn't have a body it just looked like the three lights in formation so right. we had we had talked about that a little bit but yeah so i i've had quite a good experience with the phoenix lights and well the, the phenomenon around them at least yeah they said and he's really opened my eyes in regards to uh, the the different ufos so to speak uh when he speaks in regards to uh, orbs and petroglyphs and stuff it, it really spoke to me when I started to look and see if there were petroglyphs in my area because I'm in California right. and uh, a couple of years back there happened to be an incident uh, in a city really close to me maybe like 30 40 minutes away Stockton California where it literally looked like a hole opened up in the sky and it was all over the local news you can look this up um, wow. and it looked like a hole opened up in the sky and everybody was freaking out about it. And uh, I really didn't pay any mind to it until I started talking uh, with uh, Jeff and, and then talking to Mike and mm -hmm. looking at petroglyphs and seeing if there were any fault lines in that particular area. And lo and behold, there's petroglyphs and there's fault lines in that area. Nice. So, you know, just opening my eyes to, to new things. Right. Yeah, it's crazy how they, they add up together like that. Yeah. And uh, I actually did the same thing. This, I think the same night Rodney actually looked up some stuff and found here in Oregon even there's petroglyphs with those exact same spirals carved into the sides and things like that. And it does seem like they can be more hot spots for, for UFO activity. Yeah, I, I believe so. I mean, I had him a, a guest on my show who threw about maybe six months ago, eight months ago. And uh, we, we had a good long conversation, almost about a good hour. But uh, he sent me his book. Uh, it was an e-book. And I was actually reading through and looking at all the petroglyphs that, that he was spotting and, and how these, uh, these shapes of these orbs take, uh, take, take shape with a lot of these uh, petroglyphs that are on the ground and how they, they kind of make, look uh, similar to each other. So, uh, yeah, man, that's, uh, that was a pretty great interview that I did with him. And it, it was just kind of a, a, a question that I had for you guys. I mean, just if you had a little bit more insight on stuff like that, because you don't hear too much about that incident uh, as much because it happened, what, in the 90s or something like that? So um, wasn't there, there was a famous uh, a movie star. I forget what his name was. That actually was one of the people that filmed it. Um, are you guys familiar with what person it might be? Uh, no, no it, not. It's, an, it's an actor it's a famous actor and he's in a lot of movies and stuff i want to say it was keith something or uh i, know man, I can't remember right? i'm gonna have to look it up was he at a hotel or something and, and happened to catch a ufo on film or something like no that? it was it was the phoenix lights it was part of one of the phoenix oh yeah games. yeah um god i i can't remember his name but I he was Russell literally the one. person that caught the phoenix lights he was in the plane I can't think of his name. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember what it was, but I thought it was a fun fact around the actual Phoenix, the famous Phoenix Lights case. I thought it was funny that it happened to be a kind of famous person that ended up recording it. Wow. Right. And he didn't even know. It, he, it, he reported it. I mean, he remembered that he reported it, 
but he didn't know that that was the Phoenix Light. He thought it was something else. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's wild. <laughs> well, that thing was huge. You know what I mean? It was huge. I mean, it's it. so many people got videos of that thing, and, you know, why it flew so low, why it flew over that area, I don't think we'll ever know, but... Uh, I mean, there was a great story that came out of that. I think they even made a film, a uh, movie about it. I, I saw it last year. Um, now, let's talk about this alien, uh, about the aliens now. So uh, we're going to talk about this alien interview, this famous one that you see floating around all over the place. This guy's talking to this, to this <laughs> alien, right? And he's interviewing him, and he's telling him that he's from the future, and, you know, he's uh, an image of us, and yada, yada. I mean... I mean, what is your take on this? I know a lot of people believe in that actual video interview. I mean, it's a great interview. Don't don't get me wrong. I mean, the questions were awesome. Uh, the, the the answers that he was given was, you know, I mean, it, it it pulls you in. But what do you guys think about that interview? So, I, oh, go ahead, Ronnie. Go ahead. I I was just for me, I I just thought it was more cinematic than anything uh and and the reason i say that is because if i can remember i just remember the background being looking kind of ominous um and and for me i i would just because i've been in the military before and not to say that it was a a military person performing that that interview but i would kind of have to imagine it would be some type of government official and I can only imagine they would want it in a lighted area. They're going to have the best technology that they can get their hands on as far as to record it. Um, I don't know. I'm just a little skeptical in that regard. I mean, uh, me and Mike, we've talked about this before, how it's too good to be true. Right. And, and, uh, and sometimes, you know, when we look over footage and then we review and analyze it here, you know, it, it could be true, but we're very well pushing into the side or saying that it could be fake just based on the fact that it looks too good to be true. I, I don't know if that makes any sense or not. No, no, it's true. I mean, uh, when I first saw it, I was like, wow, no, no way. I was like, no way. You know, kind of just thinking about it, you know, and then uh, after I did some digging and it took a little while, you know, because this video pops up on every feed you, you see. You yeah. know, and, and so mm-hmm. it, it, it does come out to be it, it is a hoax. Yes, it is. But uh, the way it was done, the way they made this uh, extraterrestrial, he even blinked his eyes. You know what I mean? The, the movement of yes. how, how it was made. <laughs> you know, it was, it was it's crazy the way it's done. It's great the way they did it. You know, like like Rodney says, cinematic, you know. And basically, I think it was some guy that was trying to uh, promote his business somehow and made this uh, kind of commercialistic you know, look real uh, interview, but it's, it, I don't know if you guys remember, but he has a part one, I believe in a part two to it. So um, I just thought that, you know, it was a lot of people that have been watching this lately are, and I've seen a lot of their comments, right. Uh, on, on other mm-hmm. UFO groups. And they're like, Oh my God, this is real. You guys. And you know, everybody else is laughing, you know, and, and I don't like to, to uh, deter anybody from ufology. But uh, when it comes to something like this, you know, to what's real and what's not, you know, I, I think that uh, as us, as uh, looking into UFOs and, and being in the, in the ufology, that we, it, it should be up to us to tell them, you know, in a, in a nice way, hey, this this is not real. You know, uh, this is why, you know, uh, and, and just kind of don't look at it in, in that sense, you know, uh, as it being true. And next time you see it or you see it on a group, just kind of tell them, look, it's not real. You know, this is where we got it from, or this is this is where it was made. And um, you know, is this what you guys do as well on on your on your end, as far as like trying to help people uh, understand what is real and what is not? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. I, I was actually going to bring up a point um, on one of the American UFO Society live streams we did with me and Rodney and a couple of our other friends we had uh, put together a couple of clips that were actually pictures of like the, I think one of them was the alien body under surgery. Uh, one of them was, I think where they had them where they were going to interrogate them or something like that. And, and we reviewed them live and you can, you can point out a lot of stuff that it, you, you can just basically, you can show somebody that it's not actually real. 
and a, and a CGI and people put now some of them look great. They're awesome pictures. They're really cool. Right. Um, they look great, but it's, it's good to bring up the fakes in videos and let people know that, Hey, this is fake and this is why it's fake. So that way the next time they're, they're easily able to go, oh, okay, okay. I know I'm looking at something real this time. Right. Yeah. And there's different, I mean, software and, and programs that you can use to help disseminate. I mean, I, I use this software and, and I mean, um, you know, there's, there's transparency, there's, you know, where you can take stuff out. I mean, with the green screen, you can pretty much do anything you want. I'm sure you're aware of this. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, just, uh, making, uh, videos and actually, uh, like looking through UFO footage and actually checking for the things that people are not really familiar with. Like, if you look on the outlining of the actual video itself and see any blurriness or or any type of edging on it here, you can maybe see that it was cropped. Right. Um, if you're looking at any differences or any similarities in clouds, uh, right. you can see that the clouds may have been doubled. Mm-hmm. Um, if uh, the, the images are actually uh, uh, floating only in front of clouds and not passing through clouds. That's another example. There are so many different um, methods that you can actually use to disseminate whether or not these are real. Um, and I think just a lot of people don't know about it. And I honestly think some people really just don't want to know about it. They just want to have that that kind of childish expectation of like, oh my God, I'm looking at something, you know, that's out of this world. I'm looking at a real UFO and they don't want to be told that it's not real. They want to have that, that belief that they're looking at something that's not from this earth. Right. At least their heart's in the right place. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Absolutely. Let's touch base on that soft software theory just for a minute. Um, so, I mean, I know now these days we've got some awesome software that we can use on our computers, uh, like you were talking about, to kind of mimic things, change backgrounds, all that good stuff that you were, you were speaking of. Okay, so a lot of people have seen the Ivan 0135 uh, Skinny Bob videos, right? He's got four of them out on his YouTube channel. So this, was, this video was put out, I think it was nine years ago nine or 10 years ago where the software was, it was there, but it wasn't as good as that video is. Do what is your take on those videos that, uh, from Ivan zero one three five? You know what? I haven't actually seen that one. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I'm not familiar with it either. You Ivan three, two, five videos about to catch a couple of viewers from us because I've, I've haven't heard of that one, but it sounds interesting. Oh no! You need to see it. It actually, it's on. It's uh, go to to his YouTube channel, and uh, I, I mean, you'll see it in every documentary. You'll see that footage of Skinny Bob. It's it's you'll see it um, like a an extraterrestrial walking. You'll see how they're they're sitting. It's sitting down, and then it's it's moving its head left and right. Uh, Is it in and, a field? There's a there's a flying saucer parked in a field with an alien walking behind it. No, there's one where there's a few aliens walking with it, and I think they call that one the uh, the vacation. Uh, and then there's one where where this this UFO is flying at a low altitude, and they're filming it. Um, and I'm talking this is maybe 1940s. Uh, the 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 video looks like the film because it's like a film, right? And and you can see this this craft flying, and then all of a sudden it it it's on the ground crashed. So, uh, but the 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 scenes in it, it's like they're filming it from an airplane. They're filming it from the ground as it's flying. And then they're filming these, uh, these, uh, extraterrestrials walking around. I mean, it's been around for a while. A lot of people, I've seen it in the history channel. I've seen it on a bunch of documentaries. And, you know, I just wanted to know if you guys had ever seen this video and you know, what was your intake uh, or what do you, what are your thoughts about it? But since you haven't seen it, I mean, uh, go check it out, see what you think. Because a lot of people have said, uh, you know, it's CGI, yada, 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 you know, uh, but the software now is so much, it's so much better than it was 10 years ago, right? So if whoever yeah. did, if this video was CGI or, or any kind of uh, like a, a puppeteer or anything like that, you know, this guy did 
a super job where he can get an Oscar for that film. You know, I mean, just the way it's <laughs> it's made. Uh, you know, and, and so many people have said, no, it's 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 been debunked, yada yada. You, you can't. Nobody has. Nobody even knows who this guy is. You know, he's only got four films out, and that thing's been out. Uh, for like I said, nine or ten years, and you know, I just wanted to catch you guys, you know, um, thoughts on, on that. If you if you knew anything about that, but um, well, those are always the interesting ones because, like I said, the ones that are really good, it's all they're almost unbelievable and right. uh, are unbelievable. I, I should say, right. um, and I mean, when you're looking at it too, if you've ever experienced this stuff, you know, personally, they feel that way too, and I happen to come across something like that too and i don't know if it's just my luck i don't know if people are i don't know what's going on i'm not going to speculate but literally sitting in in my home before you know um i actually really truly got into ufos or anything like that my roommate happens to be looking out the window because the way our kitchen faces there's a window Uh and it points directly out to the uh neighborhood and uh, he just casually looks out the window and he goes, hey, you know, Rodney, you got uh, two red lights or two red orbs uh, coming over the house. So mm-hmm. I immediately grabbed my camera. Mm-hmm. And you know who this is, uh, um, Mike. This is Terry. Cousin Terry. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so I, I immediately grabbed my camera and I'm in a frantic rush because I'm trying to get out. I'm trying to record this thing. And as I go outside, the most unbelievable thing happened these two orbs red it had to be like dawn so it's still a little bit of light outside and it comes and turns into one red light and it flies over my house it had to be maybe 600 feet up from where we were Mm -hmm. in the sky Mm -hmm. and we're looking at it and as we're looking at it it becomes just a blip in the sky to nothing within the matter of five seconds. It was moving that fast. And it was spectacular to watch, but it was so unreal. I didn't even, I, I couldn't even grab my camera in time to, to look at it or to, to try to get it. it. It happened that quick. And I was so mad at myself that I couldn't get it on film. Wow. I just kind of sat back and I thought for a second, I really did just experience two lights come together, turn into one. Mm-hmm. And in this, I can truly say it had no form. It was only the two lights and they came together. And then this one light just took off in a matter of seconds. And, wow. uh, when, again, when you see stuff like that, it feels unreal. If I was to watch that on on YouTube or video, I would say this is complete crap. <laughs> this is fake. Drones. But me Drones. seeing it with my own eyes, I know that there's stuff out there like that. Right. And, and, I, and I know what you're saying because I believe it was last year uh, I was in my work truck, right? And I don't carry my cameras with me. And I, and I always beat myself up for it because I need to carry my cameras, my professional cameras with me. But I was going down uh, this road, right? It's in the city. And I'm uh, I'm coming close to an underpass, right? So when I'm going uh, r- right, right before I get to it, I stop at the stop sign. And I happen to look up. So I'm looking up to the right of me. And I don't know, maybe 300, 400 feet up in the sky. I'm seeing this blob that almost looks like mercury. You know how mercury kind of makes that, that kind yes. of blob look. Okay. So it looks like this and it's, and it's almost like blobbing into a, a, a line almost. And I'm saying, wait a minute. First I thought, okay, it's, it's somebody's balloon, you know, silver balloon from a birthday party. You know, it's, it's reflecting. And when I'm looking at it, it starts taking shape. Right. And it starts having like blue, blue dot lights on it. And I'm like, wait a minute. So at that point I'm, cruising under the, the the underpass and I said you know what I'm going to pull over and then jump out of my truck and then you know kind of grab my iPhone and see if I can grab video but but as soon as I, I shot myself under that underpass turned around I looked up that thing was gone you know so uh, I know what you're saying when you see it with your own eyes and then when you see videos of it I mean it just you know you have two different spectrums of it uh, as far as like your eyes in, in other words like how we're seeing things in real life and when we see things in videos and and it makes a lot of sense what Ronnie Rodney was saying you know that about how if he sees it on a video well he might not believe it you know 
um, a lot of videos I throw out and people, the first thing is your drone. It's a drone. You know, it's a drone. It's a big yeah. drone. You know what I mean? It's a huge drone. So I, I actually have a, a funny story from last night. So Comet Neowise is visible all the way until July 22nd right now. And you can actually see it with your naked eye. I took a couple pictures of it and put it on Facebook the other day. But I'm out last night and I, I'm looking at Comet Neowise and I'm just kind of on a little walk on this little trail beside my house. Uh -huh. And this giant bright light, almost yellowish kind of white, starts coming across the sky. And it, it's moving like a satellite, but it's way lower and way bigger and brighter. Mm -hmm. And so I immediately, I start recording. I'm like, this thing's dead silent. And I, I'm recording it as a UFO. And the commentary in the video is funny that I, I ended up debunking it two minutes after I recorded it. But I, I recorded it as a UFO sighting at first because I was like, oh, wow, this is a really large, weird light that's really quiet mm -hmm. moving its way across right. the sky. So I record it for about three minutes. And as soon as I get off the phone... I do a quick Google search and it's the ISS, the International Space Station was flying over Eugene, Oregon, yeah. right at 10.56 p.m. And it was about 11.01 when I was on the Google search. So wow. I debunked it real quick. I still posted it, yeah. but you could see that how people can mistake UFOs on camera versus the satellite and, and things like that. Because I thought it might have been a UFO at first, but then after a quick search, I realized it was the space station. I mean, and you get excited. And the one you know. Go ahead, Rodney. I, I was just going to say the ones I really find interesting are the ones um, when the people actually have the lasers and they're they're flashing those lasers yeah. at these objects that are in the sky and they usually have the night vision cameras. And um, those are the ones that I find particularly interesting because these things are literally following the laser back and forth, left and right, up and down. Uh, you know, going vertical and just all different kinds of angles here, just following this laser. Now, when you're looking at this and you have a trained eye and you and you know how night vision works, you know that you're looking at that at something that's that's outside of the atmosphere. You know that it's either sitting in in low orbit or mid orbit, somewhere around there. So, you know, could something potentially get up there that high? Yes, it could. Yeah. But it's not going to follow uh, a laser like that. So those are the ones I find particularly interesting because of my field, knowing that they're, you know, in, in low orbit space, knowing that there's very few things that can get up there. And by the way, it's actually following the laser, too. Now, I don't know if you guys have actually saw those particular ones. Mm -hmm. I know um, exactly which one you're talking about. There's also one on Big Bear Mountain, California. That's, that's the exact yeah. same case where they follow the laser. Yeah. I've seen yeah, that, and, and, and I've personally done this before too. Oh, nice, nice. Uh, yeah, because my friends uh, from ET Connections, I had a interview with them, them about four months ago, and they're out there and they're CE fivers, right? So they go and, and you know channel and and they they talk to the to the UFOs, and then the, uh, they said they've caught. I've seen their videos, so they actually shoot a laser. It flashes back. You know what I mean? So it, it's it's uh, you know it's something's out there. You know what I mean? Uh, it's communicating. Yeah. It's communicating. I mean, I just did a, a podcast uh, uh, on the Allagash Four. You know, these guys that were on that boat, you know, uh, you know they experienced something similar to that. But this craft was like 100 feet in front of them, right? So uh, they just thought that it was an airplane at first. But then when it came closer, uh, you know, one of the guys said, you know what? I'm going to get my flashlight and flash my flashlight at it. So when he hit it with the flashlight, this thing immediately returned a beam of light and he hit the boat right i mean it didn't do him anything it just kind of like threw a spotlight on him uh, they think they said this thing was silent but they were so intrigued that they were able to communicate with this object you know so it had some sort of intelligence in other words so um no i i hear what you're saying as far as the the laser part um now let me ask you guys this question all aboard for your chance to win $1,000 every week until December 28th. That's right, $1,000 cash just in time for the holidays. To hop on board, just head to churchillmortgage.com and punch your ticket to the Churchill Express giveaway. Visit churchillmortgage.com for your chance to win big. This is a paid advertisement. NMLS ID 1591. NMLSconsumeraccess.org. Equal housing lender. 1749 Mallory Lane, Suite 100, Brentwood, Tennessee 37027. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? 
Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Forward, prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Why, why do you think that a lot of these crafts or UFOs or, or are coming so close now or so many are coming around even more now than before. Why do you think that is happening now? I don't know why it's happening now. Go, go ahead, uh, Mike. I'm sorry. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. I was. Uh, I, I got a few things actually. I want to say touch back real quick on what you were saying about the CE5. Uh-huh. I just recently started looking into that, and that, that is, there's a pretty large group of people that actually try to make contact through through all types of methods. And it, it's a pretty wild thing. I, I just recently looked at that. But um, I also, uh, I, I don't, some people say like the pandemic could be causing more activity, uh, less light pollution from businesses being closed and not so many people outside. That could be one thing because I noticed a lot of areas that are hot spots for UFOs tend to be darker areas. So you can see a lot more in the sky. So I, I think that could have something to do with it. Less pollution in the air. Um, just all kinds of different things, really. Do you and, guys... Well, I fall under the belief that, and this is just my opinion, um, that if they wanted to do something to us, they would have done it a long time ago. Right. Uh, and me and Mike were kind of just talking about this. I feel like uh, any um, being or, or civilization that can travel light years away from one planet to another can... It definitely has uh, better technology than us. So I just, I feel like if they are coming and they are observing, I, I pray and I hope that it's in man's benefit because we're not doing a good job at all um, taking care of ourselves as it is. Right. And um, I would like to believe that they are here to make sure that, you know, we don't, we don't end ourselves. And, and that's just my hope and belief of right. why they're here. I, I like that a lot, actually. I, I kind of feel the same way about it. They uh, almost in a sense where we're in a, like they're not experiment necessary, but they, they're observing. If you look at ancient alien theory, if they've really been here for that long, which there's a lot of proof they have been around that long, right. they've been looking at us for a long time. So if they did want to do something, they, they could have easily done it already. They could have, there's a million things they could have done. So the fact that they haven't revealed themselves or anything like that, like landing on the White House lawn saying, hey, we're here, I, I think could be because they're, they're observing and, and checking us out, almost like a, a scientific research project. And why would you talk to an ant anyway? I mean, that's another thing. Yeah. You know, we don't, we don't communicate with ants, right. you know. We don't even try to act, you know, get out the way if we, you know, see them on the ground. Sometimes we just step on them, you know, right. hopefully that they don't <laughs> look at us that way. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, I, it's just, it, we're just so below them when it comes to intelligence. I mean, why would they? Yeah, that I'm is with- a good point. There's actually an old episode of The Twilight Zone where they, uh, they reference aliens basically and humans as ants. And it's, it's really weird how they, they make it work, but it, it takes place in both shoes as if we were the, the humans and the ants are the ants, but they can actually were intelligent ants. And then if we were the ants with the aliens as the humans coming down and it kind of just gave a perfect analogy of what you just said. So it, that's pretty interesting. Wow. I mean, yeah. look at what we do to mice on a daily basis we Mm -hmm. inject mice with all different kinds of uh chemicals all different kind of experiments to to find out you know how it would work and react on humans and stuff we don't never you know ask the rats or the mice if they would find an rda form so they can you know potentially give up their life we don't ask them for permission of anything like that you know we don't ask them to come into their environment we just do it. And, right. that, you know, that's probably how they feel about us and our earth. No, I'm with you guys. That's on a scary that. thought. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm with you guys on, on all that, what you just said, because, you know, I, I believe the same thing. They're just watching over us. Make sure we don't, you know, uh, 
destroy ourselves like he's saying you know like rod said i mean it's 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 that sense that there's they're so close but yet so far right we have this feeling of yeah yeah we can we can see them but we can't touch them right so it kind of gets you in, in that in that belief which should i believe or should i not believe i mean to me it's like how can you not believe when we're seeing them on a daily basis with your own eyes I mean, I'm, I I think the probability has probably gone up as far as like, let's say one out of 10 people have probably seen a UFO by now. You know what I mean? So it's, yeah. it, it's, oh. it's, it's, it's gone up so much because of the activity that has been around uh, recently. And, and I understand that, you know, they're, they're probably, like I said, watching over us, making sure this doesn't happen. But in a sense, what Rodney was saying and Michael was saying, what you guys are saying that, you know, uh, why would they want to land here to me personally uh you know especially with with the uh all the the you know they're so advanced right and if they give us something like that i mean i don't think that we'll be able to handle it as far as like uh not being able to you know hurt ourselves or hurt somebody else with it so um and they they just might be the the peacekeepers as far as like as far as that you know what I mean? They don't want this planet destroyed because it is, it is a beautiful planet. I mean, what more can you see from space than the Earth? You know, the water, the way it looks. We've seen beautiful photos of it with the eclipse that happens, you know, uh, last year and even this year. You know, uh, yeah. why destroy something like that? It doesn't make any sense. So, no and I think our planet is oh. connected. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was, I was just going to point out there's that uh, I want to say it's the Rendlesham incident where the nuke was actually disabled without anybody doing anything. And it, it shows that it was there was a UFO over the base and everything like that. So it, it goes to kind of make you think, hey, if they just disabled the nuke, why were they doing that to, to maybe try to keep peace with us? Yeah, yeah. I've seen, uh, I've actually, there's a, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say there's another video uh, going around. It's been going around for maybe five, six years now. And I want to say it's a military base out in Texas. I'm not for sure which one, but um, they there's uh, they claim that it's a uh, it's a transfusion box or something that uh, exploded in the middle of the night. Mm-hmm. Um, and you see all these beautiful colors that are going off on the ground and exploding. Right. And uh, the military is saying that it's a, it's a transfusion box or something like that exploding. But it's happening in multiple areas. And then if you look in the sky, there are three or four little dots in the sky that just hover over the whole time as these transfusion boxes are going off. And, and they were trying to say that, you know, it was these boxes going off. But a lot of people were saying that, you know, there was something going on with this military base where they had something <laughs> that they weren't supposed to have. Right. And these beings from other, another world or, or other place, you know, came to essentially take back what was theirs or either protect the earth from what they were going to do with this particular thing that they had. I don't know what it was. I can only speculate, but it's all over the internet. And now I'll, I'll actually send that to you if you haven't saw it already, but it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Send it. Uh, that way I can post links to it uh, on this podcast, you know, for so everybody can check those out. I, there's another video floating. It's been, I think it's been in the, since the 1970s or eighties, there's a rocket flying. You could see it. Uh, they're, they're actually, it's a black and white uh, video of it. And you see this UFO flying around the tip of it, and it's shooting some kind of beam on it, uh, kind of uh, disabling uh, the mechanism that's inside of there. I guess it's a warhead. I don't know. But you, you can see this UFO just flying around and shooting some kind of small little beam around it while it's way up there. They have a telescope on it, and it's a g- cool video. It's been around for a while now, but uh, I'll, I'll throw a link to that one, too, so people can see that video if you guys haven't seen it already. If I can touch on that, because I have actually saw that one. Um, and that was actually one of the first videos that I had the opportunity to analyze. And if you ever get a chance, I would recommend that you go on to NASA's uh, uh, website uh-huh. and actually look up that video. It has like a number tag on it here. And that's the only way you can get the as close to the original footage as you can. Because if you get any other footage of, of that same clip, 
-hmm. it's going to show up rendered that it's false. It's not real. Right. Um, but if you happen to get the original one from uh, NASA, mm -hmm. I mean, there is nothing fake about that. And I just, that was one of the ones I almost spent, I think I spent about a month on it because as I started getting better software, as I started becoming a little bit more knowledgeable uh -huh. about what to look for when it came to fake videos and stuff, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I I just couldn't debunk that one. And that was one that looked at, it looked so, un, it was so good, it looked it, it looked unreal to me. And I just knew that it had to be fake, mm -hmm. but I couldn't find anything that made it fake or made it to a, that, that I thought it was tampered with in any way. Right. So those are, that's one of the videos, at least for me, that I look at and I say, you know, there's there's definitely something going on up there that they yeah. know about. So for, for sure, for sure. Well, guys, uh, thank you for being on today's show here on Alien Strand. And like I said, this is the Real UFO Talk number uh, number two now, and with Michael Beavers and Rodney Thomas. So, um, you guys, can you guys give us a link to to y'all's uh, to y'all's uh, YouTube or anything like that, so people can from this podcast can go to your your shows. Michael? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mike, you go first. Oh, okay. No worries, no worries. Um, so you can find me at The Theory with Mike Beavers on Facebook. You can also find me on YouTube at UFOs over U of O, as in the University of Oregon. It's kind of just a little abbreviation. But if you want to get in contact with both me and Rodney, you can also contact both of us at the American UFO Society Facebook page and group. Nice. Absolutely. And I have my own channel on YouTube. It's actually called The Awaken Show. Uh, you can find it on there. That's with the, and then the Awaken Show. Uh, you can also find The Awaken Show on YouTube. Um, I'm sorry, on Facebook, excuse me. Uh, right. And you can find us at the group if you want to actually check the group out and share some of your footage here at UFOs Are Us. Nice, nice. Well, thank you. I, I just actually, I just was watching one of y'all's videos with both of y'all together in the Awaken show. And uh, thank you for the shout out that y'all put out there for Alien Strand. I really do appreciate that. I watched y'all's whole, uh, I, guess, I think it was about 47 minutes maybe, but it was, a, it was a great show. You know, you guys are doing a great job. And, you know, uh, I'm proud of you, and I'm sure everybody else out there is proud of you of what you guys are doing and what you're trying to accomplish for the ufology. You know, and, you know, much big kudos to you guys for, for doing such a great job. And, and we're going to point people your way to your YouTube and your Facebook channel so that way they can go check you guys out. And uh, if they want to speak to you, they can talk to you guys one-on-one, -on -one, correct, as well? Absolutely. And, and also, just a little tidbit, we do actually play uh like games and whatnot like we have a ufology trivia game that we're actually working on that's in the works right now nice. it's kind of more of in the theme of, of jeopardy uh and we do that because we want people to be knowledgeable but also have a good time with uh ufology as well good nice that sounds like a fun little project yeah. there yeah, great. So, you win some uh, cool prizes too. Ah, uh, prizes! Everybody loves those. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I'm going to let you guys go. And like I said, um, you know, we'll we'll later on we'll get another show going. Um, you know, everybody loved the first show with Michael, and I'm sure they're going to love this one even more with both of you guys, with Rodney Thomas and Michael Beavers. Thank you guys for being on the show today. I really do appreciate it, and we'll catch you on the next one. Okay. For sure. Thanks. Right. Right. It was great being here. All right, guys. We'll talk to you next Thank time. You. Yes, sir. You guys have a good night. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. What a great interview that was. It was a really good interview. These guys, I mean, they know their stuff. You know, uh, they've experienced a bunch of uh, uh, UFOs themselves, personally. And, uh, you know, they've been studying them as well. You know, just trying to figure out and debunking them finding out what's real and what's not. And, uh, you know, Michael and Rodney, you know, they're doing such a good job on that. And I, and I thought it was important for them to be on the show today because, you know, they have a lot, a lot of knowledge on it. And like they said, if if you need to uh, talk to them or, or speak with them, go check them out on their shows. I'm going to post links to, to their shows on, on this podcast so you guys can find that on the information. But I hope you guys got a lot of information from uh this podcast today maybe things you didn't know 
uh, on these stories that we're talking about or, or what the stories that I was speaking of. You know, uh, everybody on this group right here was great because they know their stuff. And these are really, really good guys here. You know, they're 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 very intelligent on what they're doing, you know, because they've been studying it for a good while now. And, you know, because they've experienced it. And that's the good thing about this, you know. Uh, it's it's just once you experience one UFO sighting, you're almost like hooked. And that's exactly what happened to me as a child. So that's why we created Alien Strand. So we can get the information out to you guys. So we can get these stories out that have happened to people. Experiences that have happened to people. And it's, I, I think it's very important for you guys to know that. And we're not trying to make you a believer or anything like that. We're just trying to get the information out. It's up to you to decide at the very end what you think is real or not. But you know, I hope you guys enjoyed today's show. You can catch us on Facebook. Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and AlienStrand.com. Go we'll check us out there, all right? There's a lot of good stuff on AlienStrand.com. So, uh, you know, it was just a great show today. And uh, we hope to catch you next time. We're going to have a really important guest on the next one. So, uh, his name's Jesse. And uh, he's going to be a really good guest for the next show. So I hope you guys stick around for next week. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. But until then, you guys have yourselves a good day. Have yourselves a good evening. And have yourselves a good night. Connections on YouTube and mountain-gate.com. And you're listening to the Alien Strand Podcast with Donald Ledesma. Catch us on YouTube and hit like and subscribe. We'll, we'll see, see you there. there. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on ChumbaCasino.com. I looked over at the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino-style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's ChumbaCasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. VGW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.